Yes, guys, I'm still <laughs> talking about Miraculous. I'm still I'm still going to do it. OK, there's no there's no stopping me. I'm just letting you know that. But also I'm, I'm posting these like later on. I usually post like the main stuff that is the main focus of this channel, which is me reading and, you know, doing these let's reads usually around like lunchtime, you know, around 12 o'clock here in America. But when it comes to s s some random stuff like this, like Miraculous Ladybug reviews, basically, I post them like way later, like in the night. So you guys would be, you know, hopefully you guys are cool with that because, you know, I like, I love really talking about miraculous ladybugs, especially with some of the predictions that are slowly coming true that I want to talk about. And if you know me, I like making predictions and also love watching shows like this that I enjoyed. I mean, let me tell you right now, I, I do love doing reviews, even though I'm not good at it. Um, I basically, you know, pretty much miraculous ladybug being one of my favorites right now. Uh, I know for a fact that there's other shows that you know, I did talk about it and pretty much that they they're already past. Like, you know, uh, Ruby season eight pass, you know, and also Amphibia. I mean, there's another season coming soon. They just had their finale and still waiting for Invincible season two. I'm still waiting. But also, I just really just want to come back and, you know, talk about Miraculous Ladybug and whatever episodes it has. And here's the thing. I'm really planning to do the other episodes that I haven't really reviewed yet, which is Furious Foo and some other kind of episodes that I forgot to or really. I actually know I, I didn't really choose to talk about it, but I am planning to actually talk about those episodes somewhere in the future because I didn't have time and I didn't really, you know, have any interest to really talk about them. So I might make another video really talking about some of these episodes all together in one video so it can be more quicker but other than that i do have to kind of remind myself in a way sadly that not a lot of people watch these videos but if you do then hopefully that you enjoy it then you know i'm i'm making at least uh you know this kind of style of content when it comes to really talking about uh where you know where the episodes align and this is the one i'm basically waiting for i did talk about soul crusher but here i am uh talking about queen banana so yeah let's get into it and my goodness astruck you really just had to pull the f the fans under the carpet like really with the i mean first off this is the english dub i'm talking about i mean the first kind of english dub that i'm gonna review and i've been seeing like reactions of the english dub from other you know miraculers that actually are talking about it in a way uh but yeah this just seems to be an episode where just like full-on astro just making chloe look bad you know go to chloe we're, we're supposed to not feel anything for him and my goodness it's just like episode you can already see how this is sort of picturing Astro versus Chloe stance like this is what it is but I mean l let's just see how this go down because there could be some redemption maybe I mean any hopes for Chloe at this point is gone I mean I don't know and also another thing that I noticed in this episode is that Adrian um yeah apparently Adrian has no one else I I guess sadly yeah I I Kagami is gone and um Chloe broke up with Adrian yeah um adrian guess what you only have one and that's the girl that was in front of you literally the whole time with a mask on i'm just saying here but yeah um we're pretty much gonna go into this in a way actually no another thing you know what i'm gonna go later because there is another person that adrian was looking at or should i say cat noir was looking at Ooh, but yeah you know let's just talk about it yeah also, Astro, what the hell are you doing? You were in the classroom doing another cameo. I mean, the last cameo he did was sort of good, but also it was also the first time I heard like Astro speak. And remember, this was in the English dub. I really thought that's what he sounds like. I thought he was American, but no, he's French. So I don't know. I'm just saying. Directing some project for the movie, which I guess the it's a movie that the mayor is like you know working with the city has promoted for you know for a good cause i guess um and yeah i guess the the first scene seeing marinette design costumes uh for a movie and also we got mary tries to shine his light and pretty much trying to showcase because i remember in soul crusher that uh mayor uh bourgeois or i just call him mayor b uh, just really wants to show his passion and what he really is into, you know, showing movies, 
and he shyly kind of like shows it in a way in the news but then the news says like okay yeah whatever okay whatever and like it's sort it she doesn't say that but it seems like that almost but yeah um yeah mary B is just happens to just uh, shy but fails then Chloe comes into the scene and she is watching news about all this going down. And she is obviously not invited uh, in the whole project that they're working at in school. And Chloe's like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be in there. And trust me, there's a lot of moments where it's full on Chloe. Chloe is now set back. And there's something about Chloe where I, I really try to understand the writers for Chloe. I don't know if this is Astruck's doing. I don't know if Astruck has a certain issue. Here's, the, here's my theory. Um, obviously, I never met the guy, but uh, the creator of the show, which is Thomas Astruck, I call him Astruck or Ass, <laughs> I'm playing, but yeah, Astruck itself, um, I mean, if I gotta be honest, like, it, it seems like from what I see it, Ass happens to have just, you know, a way of actually creating this character named Chloe, where I feel like that Ass is basically just you know, showcasing maybe this girl that Ash didn't like in the in the past. I think that's what Chloe's supposed to represent as. But it doesn't make sense because there was a little bit of like, you know, more empathy for Chloe in the at in the past seasons. So literally this is all set back. Like, is it because of the fans? Did the fans say something to Asterisk? That made him, you know, wanting to set back away from Chloe. Like, there has to be a certain cause to this. I don't know. That could be a video for another time. But, you know, right now, focus on the episode. Yeah, I was watching news and we see Sabrina feed Chloe bananas. I'm really trying to understand what the whole banana thing. Where did that came from? I mean, was Chloe always into bananas? Like, did she? I mean, I love bananas. I love me bananas. But where did the whole bananas thing came from? I don't get it. It's good for you, but, but and Asterisk, what are you trying to what are you trying to say right now? What are you trying to say? There's something that Asterisk is trying to point out that I feel like he will get in trouble of you know explaining why that Chloe likes bananas, but um Asterisk, what are you doing, man? Chloe's jealousy gets to her as she uh basically barges in the door. <laughs> and yeah. We start to see uh scene Zoe uh reenact the akumatization and the scene as they're trying to practice with Mylene. And yeah, as Chloe barges in, Chloe saying that the uh, Zoe is, you know, okay, literally said Zoe, her sister, uh came from nowhere as Mary B said uh in pretty much uh, you know, pretty much tell Chloe like yeah, yeah, the city's funding and of course Chloe didn't care. Notice how and there's also the scene as well. Chloe is 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 it is Chloe taller than Zoe? I was really confused with height when looking at this episode. I kind of have to look back a little bit. There could be the same height. It could be like um a directional like you know difference or an illusion. But I saw it and I was like, oh, I that's interesting. Like I didn't know. I thought Zoe would be taller. It would seem like Zoe. Like I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the shoes that made Zoe taller. But I don't know. Then Astro and some other director speaks. As their, I think I already talked about this. I already talked about it. Also, I just want to refrain. Like I think um, Chloe's wearing heels. That's why she looks taller. Than Zoe. Okay, that's what I was trying to see because it could play a role in the future, and you you'll see what I mean. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> uh, I even said like it's not very accurate when like where's the French accent? Uh, office producer. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, look how much money that Chloe has. I'm really, uh, I mean, I, if there's one thing I can relate, um, I wasn't really spoiled. I wasn't a spoiled kid or anything. I was somewhat spoiled. I, I wasn't spoiled, like, I think it was before I came to America, that uh, I was a somewhat of a spoiled brat. And when I was seeing Chloe and stuff like that, like, I know for a fact it's not accurate or anything. And I know for a fact that France is rich. And I don't know what what their network is i don't even know what i mean isn't the richest country like in the middle east or something but yeah chloe just happens to have so much money to the point where even replace the office producer and make changes in anything like really money can really do that for you then again the you know chloe like i don't know why why it blows me away to know that chloe is so rich to the point where he even could replace you know nasa with something else which 
you know, is obviously like NASA itself is like has a lot of money. And when I'm talking about NASA, I'm talking about the space program. She can even buy a space program, which I don't know. That could be if we're talking about an accurate, like, you know, rich brat, it would be Chloe literally buying like what in the future, uh, adult Chloe, which I can only imagine what adult Chloe would be. And hopefully she'll still be around if Astro doesn't mess it up. But in the future, like, show, would Chloe, like, buy a space program and, you know, have, like, a spaceship to moon, to the moon? Like, I'm going to Artemis, you know, something like that. God, I don't know. I'm making these dumb predictions, am I? But, yeah, um, as it goes on, uh, producer is uh, Chloe. And pretty much made Mary B as the dad. <laughs> Make a couple of changes for Chloe to be in the film. And Marinette wasn't having it. Yeah, it seems like this is sort of like a Marinette versus Chloe moment. Uh, at least a lot of times, I, from what I notice, especially as we get into the ending scene, uh, it will really show that. And you'll see why. And I understand that Chloe is just annoying, just a brat. And the writers did that on purpose for a reason. I don't know. This is just a part of me where all of this seems like... Like, I look at the ending, and I'm looking at, like, what's happening in the future of Asterix writing. And I guess a lot of times when you, and I was hoping to say this last time, but I just got to say it, that I, I feel like many people in the fandoms, when when it comes to their, like, you know, uh, expectations for any characters or anything, literally, like, the whole Adrigami and Luke and Ned thing is over. The The whole empathy for um, Chloe's over. But a lot of this is all just based in the first episodes. We don't know what's going to happen in the, in the next stages. And we kind of have to have, like, I guess Astro is somewhat teaching us to have a little bit more thicker skin and open mind when, you know, seeing these episodes in a way. As it moves on and then going, you know, pretty much, we start to hear Zoe's voice, which I'm kind of like really trying to understand. Uh, the I mean, well, this is the dub. I really thought that, you know... Zoe would be like this tomboyish badass. I mean, I thought she was gonna sound like God. I can't believe I'm having the Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony. Look, I'm not freaking. I'm not a brony. Okay, don't don't you ever put that. I'm, I never was. I never was. Okay, probably for just a month, but that was a long time ago. But yeah, um, just I thought she was gonna have that voice, but I guess she has more of a squeaky voice, and a lot of people had issues of uh zoe's english dub voice which i get it's squeaky but then again there are teenagers i co i always have to remind myself like these are teenagers chloe's a teenager There's, you know her acting like a brat is probably not going to happen in the future um whatever stress that uh marinette is going through and we all know what she is going through it's not going to happen within the future alia is probably going to be well more smart as she grows and you know uh, Marinette is very, you know, lucky to have her, even though that Alia or Rena Rouge wasn't in this episode for some reason, uh, could have been cool, but yeah, it's, it seems like these are just, you know, the younger times and th there's pretty much got to be a couple like seasons. Hopefully there's more seasons out there in the future that we're going to see a lot of these characters look back at their times once they reach to adulthood. I'm talking about like, like going to college and all that. And they're going to look back and be like, oh, man, time flies, huh? <laughs> and, you know, it seems like, you know, I can only picture the future, how it's going to be. But what's up with freaking <laughs> with, with Zoe's voice? I'm I'm playing. But yeah, I guess from I had this theory that Zoe's voice is supposed to be in sync with like Chloe's voice because Chloe, I guess her voice is squeaking away and Zoe's voice is squeaky and two of them are squeaky for a reason. And because they're teenagers, of course, I always got to remind myself that. But it's supposed to be in sync. And I guess they're supposed to be like twins in a way. That's why it's sort of made that way. But that's what I feel like is the reason. Uh, Chloe makes changes as she is supposed to be the hero. And I guess this is the part where Astro is definitely taking jabs on the fans. Which is probably what the episode is about. Chloe being us, <laughs> I guess in a way and people hear like you know like it's like the fans you know it's like chloe hears the fans it's like ah, i'm supposed to be hero you know imagine if, if what would be a much more i guess in a way uh intense jab 
uh, would Chloe would actually like say like, I'm supposed to be the hero and as another line like the fans even said so. I'm like, whoa, if that happened, like, that would be, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Asterix did that, but my goodness, that would be a total stab to the fans. Then Chloe calls Daddy, of course, and you guys see this a lot. Chloe, staying, you know, calling Daddy, you know, for more changes and all that. Not even acting in, in the script, but then Chloe already makes changes. Literally, all this happens within Chloe's reach. Chloe wants to, to be like Queen Bee, uh, but she changes t to Queen Banana. And this is the part where literally Chloe was dodging Marinette's insult. I don't know what it is. I there's part there's a part of me where I really do want to see Chloe like at least be a little bit more competitive when she's getting insulted or getting like you know you know wrecked. Like I I'm <laughs> Also, I'm noticing, this is another thing that I'm noticing, Marinette is definitely not being nicer to Chloe, and why should she be? But she's beginning to be much more savage and having these, like, th there's these insults and these burns that are pretty good, I have to say, in, on Chloe. And it's something that is, I don't know, it feels different, because I don't know what happened. I think there was a couple episodes, like, I think in Guilt Trip, uh, in towards the ending, Marinette said something to Chloe, which a lot of the fans uh, that were watch reacting to it were like, "Oh my, oh my God! Did did Marinette really said that?" Like, I'm starting to see this this ongoing kind of rhythm that Marinette obviously hates Chloe. I mean, I mean, I'm not surprised, but you know, <laughs> good burn though. Uh, Chloe dressing as Queen Banana as she needs a car, I guess. Then we made the car in like five seconds. I'm like, you crazy? Then we get an Adrianette scene in the cage <laughs> adrian is in the cage and you know talking to like Marinette. i'm just like yeah we need this <laughs> we need this but why is he in the cage why <laughs> then chloe gets stressed as she goes back to the palace to take a break i'm like come on now everything is happening so fast i think i didn't really pay much attention to the scenes i'm surprised that even i got notes of just the cage and also uh chloe going home and all that but i'm like huh the next day chloe comes as everyone left that sucks for chloe and but it makes sense because you know nobody wants to work with chloe i think it's for a purpose because you know everyone left in the scene this was literally in the next day and Chloe's like, where's everyone? And pretty much, you know, one person there was like, yeah, they left. They were even moving all that. <laughs> they made it without you, basically, because they don't want to work with you. And yeah, that's, you know, that's obviously what's going on. And it's for a purpose because uh, this is pretty much towards to aggress's attention. So that, you know, aggress being Shadow Moth would actually akumatize Chloe. And, you know, has a clever way of actually getting each character to follow or something like that you know from what i see but the movie seems better quality without her i guess uh, as it is kind of written uh, as always and i guess it's like you know written at night or dawn or something uh is always a vision as the lesson in this created a it's basically morally of a sisterly love in this movie that zoe created which is you know in the film that they're watching and of course chloe got upset and was you know saying all this stuff and pretty much there was also this scene where she chloe got so upset to the point where then adrian tries to talk to chloe but then it happened they are done this is literally the part where i guess like adrian and chloe broke up well, not they were never in a relationship, but they kind of break up like, you know, Chloe is basically like, yeah, I'm never I, I'm never talked to you again. And that's where the part where I'm like, yeah, I guess Adrian has no one. They don't have like, you know, oh, wait, that's oh, I'm I'm wrong. I'm I'm so wrong. I'm sorry, Lila. But then Lila, where is she? Honestly, like she vanished. So I don't think Lila is there. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Is Lila going to be back? Are we going to see Lila again? What the hell happened to her? You just put it like, you know, and she's just gone. Like, if she's gone, then I guess, you know, it is true. Marinette and Adrian, just them. But, you know, where the hell did Lila go? That's strange. I almost forgot about Lila. Lila was never in any of these episodes, actually. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah. Um, Chloe then uh, breaks in Adrian pretty much. Yeah, it's because that Adrian, you know, you know, you know, pretty much Chloe breaks Adrian's promise, and that's what really separate them. You know, things happen. You know, 
You only get so many promises. I guess, you know, uh, Chloe's too spoiled to understand that. But, wish I felt bad for Adrian and Chloe. I guess I put that there. Uh, then Chloe cries and she gets acclimatized. Which, I thought there was another thing that she cried when I saw the teaser. But, you know, that was just another reason. But yeah, of course, gets kumatized and even knows how it goes down, knows what Shaomont wants, literally even saying like, yeah, yeah, I get your miraculous. <laughs> and also has a gorilla name, a Banana Boom Boom. <laughs> I just love that name. Oh my God. I don't know why. It's so funny. It's so, <laughs> is this supposed to be funny in a way? Like, yeah, I guess so. It's supposed to be wacky because you're riding on a freaking gorilla and your name is Queen Banana. Yeah, there's something about this episode where it's like a full on hate letter to Chloe. <laughs> And a lot of, I'm just, I'm going to continue referencing, like, how much Astro just hates Chloe. Like, this is what this episode is. Um, but, yeah, uh, once, very much Chloe wants Zoe. Uh, she blames her own sister. Zoe feeling like it's all her fault. Then Ladybug saves Kenoir in this moment where they have a Lady Noir moment, literally. As in the middle of the fight of this uh, big gorilla or Santa monster. Ladybug uses the Lucky Charm, and guess what? Gets a moped. I'm like, well, that must be a cool way to have it, but what What you need that? I mean, I guess saving Zoe, and obviously saving Zoe, literally in even the theater scene, uh, saves Zoe to get out of the theater, and Ladybug saving Zoe again to confront for, you know, to, you know, pretty much, as Zoe confronts the Banana Queen. I'm not sure what it is. I forget what Zoe, what's, uh, what did she say to the Banana Queen, or... Chloe, of course, but basically you see how Zoe, you know, I, I guess in this show is the only hope that, you know, pretty much that Zoe really does care for Chloe. I mean, Chloe pretty much has to rely on her for that kind of love. Uh, as it goes on, uh, the Santa monster then gets acclimatized. Well, sort of. Uh, well, actually not acclimatized. A uh, cladoclism. Yeah, that's what I meant. The sentimenter gets cladoclism. I don't know why kumatize and cataclysm is in the same sense itself in my head, but I guess that's how I operate. But yeah, it, it didn't really bother him, which is something I was surprised. I thought cataclysm, no matter how big or how strong, but I guess the Santa monster is stronger as it is. And that's what I mean by a lot of these battles are going to get more harder, more tenser, and more difficult. Uh, Laybug takes Zoe to our private place, which is in a subway. And we start to discover Zoe's name, I guess. Zoe Lee? I think that's what I heard in the English dub. Uh, Zoe then receives the Be Miraculous, which I'm like, yeah, I've seen this coming. And actually is called... <laughs> Uh, Zoe's name as with the miraculous with the bee miraculous you would think like it's Queen Bee but no it's Vesperia whatever that means I call her Ves then Ves uses Venom which is this power Venom to pretty much involving a top motion and it involves to knock them out I guess I don't know uh, uses it on the head of the Sentinel Monster as it crushes putting a little bit more impact I guess you know the Cataclysm didn't really realize a lot to impact when it comes to really defeating the Sentinel Monster which is kind of strange on my you know, from what I see it, but I, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Cat Noir, <laughs> I put this note here. Cat Noir kisses Vesperia. Oh, the fans going crazy. <laughs> but no, it's literally, I think it's like a French culture thing. A Cat Noir kisses the hand of Vesperia, you know, ladylike on the hand. And so hopes that the fans, pretty much, I'm, I'm just picturing a lot of the fans that are not, you know, European or, or pretty much any fans that are just like looking at this, like, are just like shipping them. I mean, I, you can only imagine. But yeah, on the hands, so hope the fans don't freak out. Uh, then Chloe captures Ladybug, holding her hostage as she witnesses her uh, or sees her own sister being the new Queen Bee. Yeah, I, I mean, this was a moment where Chloe's anger, like, I guess Chloe itself somewhat has a temper because we start to see her like, you know, like usually if, if I was Chloe, I would be kind of sad. I'm like, wait. Oh, why are you the new Queen Bee? But of course, this is Chloe. So obviously, she's like, why are you the new queen, queen Bee? How dare you? I'm the only Queen Bee. You know, stuff like that. And yeah, even kills like Vesperia. I'm like, wow, that went dark. Okay. Uh, but not really. Of course, you know, it disappears using the banana power. And then, you know, literally turns her into a banana, even though like Queen Bee or you no know, Queen Banana is literally a freaking queen of bananas. I don't know what that says, but you know. 
you can fill in the blanks. Not, I mean, Ladybug also plotted something in Queen Banana's dress as she fails. As Cat Noir is uh, pretty much, Cat Noir and Ladybug, they were not messing around. They knock, like Cat Noir just bonk on, on her head. Like, I, I think it's on the head, right? But also, we start to see um, Ladybug just snatching. And I feel like... I'm starting to get to use of when it comes to the full impact, which would show you the the you know the the emotions of the characters. Now, if there was this scene where, like, picture this, Ladybug smacks <laughs> uh, Queen Banana to the face. Uh, you can only imagine what that means to the fans. But of course, then just swings and just booms, hits the ground. And Cat Noir, of course, even though, like, I guess Cat Noir, I don't know if Cat Noir and Queen Bee have beef, but you do start to see some beef between Ladybug and, uh, and Queen Banana or Marinette and Chloe. You start to see, I guess, a little bit of beef going on, especially with the insults that Marinette has been saying. Uh, like, I eat, it's stuff like that I start to pick up and I'm like, there's something that is going to happen in a couple episodes. There's probably going to be a scene that many Chloe stands or maybe probably anybody in the fandom is not ready to see, but it's, it might happen. It might go there. But bonk on the head and then boom, uh, everything turns back to normal as, you know, as, you know, pretty much, you know, gets like deacumatized and then, yeah, everything's good. And of course, <laughs> Chloe, there's this part where I'm like, wait, huh? Because Chloe remembers what happened. Which I'm like, how did you ha know what happened? I thought usually you, you're you supposed to not know what happened, but I guess Chloe has been akumatized so many times that she, she it's not surprising to her and sees Ladybug, yells at her, obviously doesn't say thank you, doesn't say thank you to Cat Noir. That would be funny you say <laughs> thank you to Cat Noir. Like, oh my God, thank you, Cat Noir. I love you. Like, you know, and uh, like, I don't know. I'm just imagining that and like, that would just be, uh, that, that would be funny. Uh, but then... Shadow Moth, I never seen this before. A second akumatization akumatizes Chloe again, since you know, feeling the sense of anger or whatever. But yeah, it, it, like a second time is that loud? Is that really loud? There's a lot of rules bro broken <laughs> in the show, uh, compared to the other season. But my goodness, uh, Ladybug was about to put a lucky charm away, but Vesperia offers to help, as you know, Vesperia being you know, goes always starts to help their sister to actually get it on her. To really put like, hey, this is this is a gift from mom, and also we start to see the scene where we're seeing uh Chloe, uh, and I'm gonna try to go by this quick because I think I'm almost out of time. Uh, seeing Chloe telling her sister like she hates her, but come on, not really. Do you do you like you hate everyone? You hate like you hate because you don't get what you want, you know, being this queen, I guess. Um, but yeah, Zoe uses the same lines uh from the movie and pretty much shows something that, you know, Chloe. I mean, even though hating everyone else and also having this kind of anger, there was this one person that, you know, which is Chloe's sister, and Zoe is just there to actually really guide her and help her and show that decent love, unconditional love, unconditional love. And it's it's a love that is real and I guess personal to me because, I mean, there was a point where I just like, I didn't want to talk to anyone and I'm just like, you know, get off me, don't, you know. You know, I need some time, I need some space, but then they come to me like, no, you you do need us. You, need, you know, I guess a lot of episodes I've seen from the show is like showing that, you know, friends, family is very important. If you're alone, then you're not going to survive. And I know for that for sure, because thanks to Zoe, uh, Chloe didn't get acclimatized because that would just be a lot of work. But my goodness, Zoe is just such a angel towards Chloe and that's why there was a part of me where I'm like, this is obviously just bashing on Chloe and just showing like the fandom. But when I saw the scene between Chloe and Zoe, it sort of is shown like a, the most littlest t kind of hope, I would say. Very little. A molecule of hope that something could, you know, something good happen. You know, something good can happen for Chloe, you know, and I'm not sure what that is. I know for a fact that Astro is not going to give Chloe any like hope. But, you know, here I am being optimistic and me thinking like, you know, what, Chloe's good. You know, th there could be something happening in the future. Don't worry about it. You know, patience is a virtue. But yeah, we see the uh, uh of the Lucky Charm as proof as it works. And, 
yeah, then Chloe leaves and everything is good. And yeah, I guess that's it. I think that's all what I have to review. There's a lot of stuff that I said in this. I apologize if I was jumping, you know, uh, left and right, back and forth, and flips all the all around, basically. But, you know, this was the episode that I was really looking forward to. I was looking forward to, like, a, you know, a Chloe episode. And I know for a fact that, I guess, Astruck didn't deliver what the fans want. Because the fans really want Chloe. And I, I, I was kind of curious. I was personally kind of really wanting, like, uh, some w w what's going to happen to Chloe. Because I do want to like see like what is really gonna happen with these characters that if you don't really care about them why they're still around there's a reason why Astruck still has chloe around there's a reason why she's still there and there could it's because there is a probably a purpose that could happen in the future maybe hopefully it's not chloe becoming a villain again but hopefully it's her becoming something i guess else in a way you know, people might think I'm a stan, but no, I mean, I don't care less about, I'm like, if Chloe's gone, then good, you know, like, okay, fine, whatever, you know, like, just get it over with Astruck while you're still having him, but I do see Astruck, and as a writer, I do see something true Astruck, where, what, the reason why he's keeping Chloe, there is something that kind of speaks to, you know, uh, Thomas in a way and I don't know Thomas I don't know anything of this but I'm just making these assumptions and also I guess in a way uh reading through his writing that Chloe sort of is playing a role in Astro's life in a way that it reminds him of something of something like a memento of his past and we start to see that and I'm gonna be honest if I was a writer I would actually put a character that it resembles something from my past and I guess that is a writing technique in a way that, you know, most writers, when they do make a story, they don't want to let that go. And that's the sort of that. I, I don't know. That's just the way I put it and the way I see it. But we're just going to have to wait and see because I'm still waiting for the whole squad to come up. The Miraculous Squad and Vesperia's in. But yeah, I don't know. I'll see you guys next time. It's your boy, Peter.